Hello, Dr. Eugene Ayello here. Thank you for watching another video in my patient education series. This video today, we're gonna to be discussing structured water. I have patients that um, ask me that question about, uh, they bring up alkaline structured water, should they be drinking it? Um, my answer is no, obviously it's, you wanna drink purified drinking water, just regular pH, straight, even, nothing up, nothing down. But structured water, I guess there's devices that are claiming that they'll structure water before you consume it. Um, it's an impossibility. There's water by nature is not going to be structured until it interacts with proteins, which we're going to discuss. So water comes in three different formats according to conventional biology. We've got liquid water, gas water, and we got solid water, ice. In liquid water, we've got the H2O molecules just kind of freely floating, bumping around, still fluid, basically, they're moving. Um, they're close enough together that they're in a liquid state. Of note, a water molecule is made up of an oxygen and two hydrogens. This allows for water to be polar, meaning one side of it's negatively charged, the other side's positively charged. So they can interact and link up together for brief periods of time and then separate. Um, that charge separation within water is not very strong. So in gas water, in gas, gas water, I need to say, um, it, it's the same structure as liquid water, except for those particles are separate, meaning they're further apart. So they've dissipated from the liquid state and now they're in a gas state, bouncing around further apart from each other. Solid water, it's pretty cool because the water molecules actually link up and form a lattice. And as we know from snow, snowflakes, that these lattices can take on all kinds of different configurations. So this, this basic lattice formation can stack on top of each other, and then they can have bridges that connect the sides to each other. So any combination of this, almost like Legos, that you can just start stacking them any way you want. Again, this is going to be a neutral state with the polar polarity lining up and nothing, nothing interacting all that much other than just those gentle attraction of charges. Structured water is unique in the fact it's not even really water anymore. It's actually H3O2 and temporarily, meaning it's in and out of phase. It, it's water, but it's, it's sharing an electron. So it carries a negative charge. It's no longer polar. So there's an extra electron within the structure of water. Now, structured water is interesting in the fact that it doesn't stack like it does in, in ice, it, it offsets. So it, it's just layers of offsetting that make it not as solid, not as liquid, more of a gel. So that's the basic chemistry of structured water. I'm gonna discuss a little bit more about the nature of, of structured water in a minute. So structured water was discovered when uh, they found that if you took a hydrophilic substance, and a hydrophilic substance is something that likes water, it attracts it versus hydrophobic, repels it. So oil would be an example of a hydrophobic substance. Um, something interesting would happen around the perimeter of that hydrophilic substance. If it had, if say the liquid water had so sodium chloride in it, the sodium and the chloride would be repelled from this area. They called it the exclusion zone. Easy water is another name for structured water. So for some reason, this area that was at the periphery would exclude that. It wouldn't allow the sodium and chloride in. It would just be pure water. So the debate arose in chemistry of how this was occurring. There was two theories. The first theory being that those H2O molecules just lined up with their positive and negatives and stacked like bricks. Um, the problem is the thickness of that EZ compared to the size of water molecules would make it stacking brick on top of brick two to three football fields high. And we know that wouldn't work. It would just tip over. It would be too wobbly. So when they discovered that when you're looking at structured water, you're not, it's not just a simple lining up of bricks. It's the other theory came in that offsetting of the structure, which they eventually discovered when they viewed EZ water, was that they're more in a structure like this with the offset and they have stability. So that stability of the structure would create that thickness of a zone. So going back again on positive and negatives, regular liquid water doesn't have a charge to it other than that slight polarity within the H2O molecule. 
When they started studying the easy water, they found out that there was actually a negative charge compared to the very edge near the bulk water. If they put a probe in, one inside the easy water, one outside, they could actually get a voltage from water. Well, that's pretty amazing if you think about it, that just basic water with a hydrophilic substance in the center will create a voltage, and could we harness that? It's such a small voltage, it hasn't become useful at all for any purpose other than, you know, research and interest. So hydrophilic substances, what's a hydrophilic substance? Every protein in our body is a hydrophilic substance. So when you're making jello, the reason that jello forms is it's structuring the water that's occurring around the collagen proteins within that jello. So in biology, this concept is going to be ubiquitous within every cell, meaning when I talked about cells and their, their peripheral cytoskeleton and all those different protein networks within a cell, the inside of a cell is pretty much just structured water. So when I get back to the question I get asked a lot, should I be drinking structured water? It doesn't really make any sense. If you're drinking pure, clean water, once it's within your system and it gets inside of a cell, it's just going to naturally structure. The question that was debated amongst the conventional view of the stack bricking versus this is how is this occurring? You can't change H2O into H3O2 without some type of energetic shift. When they discovered there was a voltage potential, and I'm going to call that charge separation, I mentioned that in the first video, how biologic proteins, pigments, will harness electromagnetic energy from the sun to create initial charge separation. This was occurring in water. Um, Gerald Pollack, if you do any reading on the fourth phase of water, his book, or read anything or any videos on structured water, that name is going to come up. Gerald Pollack had found out that when he shined infrared light, he would see that EZ zone get bigger. So the energy input, what was creating that charge separation to create the structured water around a protein was the interactions between that near infrared light and the protein. That protein was somehow absorbing that energy, which was creating the structuring of water around it. Biology is going to harness this structuring of water for work. In cells, different things will move around because the cell can control the charge of proteins. When that charge changes, it can cause structured water to destructure, creating waves of, of fluid movement around a protein. So things can be transported around the cell. So I'm going to uh, take a break here, clean the board, and we're going to talk about how that works in proteins. I'm going to give the simplest example of how easy water is used within a cell to, to have controlled reactions. I talked earlier about ATP. ATP is the currency of energy in the cell. Well, ATP is utilized to destructure and structure water, to change the states of water around proteins and change the shape around proteins. Almost all biologic processes from muscle relaxation, relaxation to a cardiac muscle firing or a muscle firing is dealing with how ATP is changing the state of that hydrophilic substance, the proteins, in relation to the easy water around them. So in a protein, we've got two states. You can call this relaxed, contracted, contract. It can go either direction the way the protein's constructed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this is the, uh, this is the uh, contracted state because it, it, it's straight and it's held firm versus the relaxed state where the protein kinks. So when ATP is bound to this protein, that extra electron that's within that that ATP molecule we discussed earlier, that stored energy of charge separation is inducing a charge into that protein, creating a protein with completely structured water. Now, things like sodium, I'm gonna use as the simplest example, calcium, all the potassium, all these different ions that are in the fluid within our cells, those things are kept away. They cannot get and interact with that protein because easy, the easy water is blocking it. Now, if that ATP is cleaved into ADP, you're gonna get an electron flow through that protein. That protein is gonna change its shape. Once this is no longer around it, something that's attracted to this part of the protein will pull that protein and kink it. Ions can rush and bind to that protein that weren't allowed to before. So that, that flow, it's gonna allow a different, we're gonna, we're gonna go from that easy water to regular water all around it. 
Well, it's going to be followed, obviously, by the easy water reforming and straightening that protein, which is then going to shift that flux. Now, if you've got a molecule, say, the, the, the microtubule system is holding on to the mitochondria at a certain spot. Well, that wave of structuring and destructuring can actually push and move different organelles, different molecules, do different exosomes. Any, any structure within the cell that has to go from point A to point B can be carried along a protein in this destructuring, restructuring wave. It's called phase transitioning of water. Highly efficient, highly efficient. When I was talking earlier, I think it might have actually been in my other video series, the biophotonic series, with um, nerve cells. Nerve cells hold a resting, an action potential, a resting potential within them. And when a nerve fires, it's just a flipping of polarity of that membrane of the nerve. Conventional science says that we have pumps and channels that are constantly pumping these different ions to separate a charge. That's not the case at all. It would take tons of ATP. The utilization would be so vast, especially because a nerve just resting can fire up to 100 times a second, just resting. So it's constantly having to do that it's phase transition. Using ATP with structured water to control ion concentrations within the cell is extremely efficient. You can use one ATP to have quite a long reaction along a very long stretch of a nerve. So structuring water is the way our body does work. So pretty exciting. Um, I, I went very simple with this lecture, but I hope you understand. And for patients, I'm sure you just want a brief understanding of what structured water is. It's just that gel form of water. So you can picture that your cells are constantly alternating between have gel, having a gel around a protein and then switching back to liquid. And that's how different things are moved around. That's also a different ion concentrations are controlled. So it's not as inefficient as the conventional models of everything being dependent on ATP. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully it makes sense and you understand what structured water is and that uh, there's no need to do it other than expose yourself to light because near-infrared energy is the only thing you need to do that. Luckily, near-infrared energy is everywhere. Um, we're in this room right now with no sunlight hitting us, but everything within the room is retaining that. The earth is constantly emitting near-infrared energy back. So you'll never be deficient in near-infrared energy. So thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed it.